Okay. So, today uh, we will discuss macroscopic state and microscopic state. For that we first consider a, a, a container of ideal gas molecules of volume V containing uh, this container contains Avogadro number of molecules. Okay. So, this is the container, this is the container. Okay, so, we consider one container contains ideal gas and the volume of the container is V and in that container we have kept Avogadro number of molecules. So, this is a uh, description of macroscopic system. Okay, so, macroscopic systems are characterized by few variables like pressure, volume, temperature, etc. So, we can observe what is the pressure here or what, what is the temperature here, etc. But the description in terms of microscopic parts requires the specification of the state of each and individual particle. So, oh, while we discuss about macro state, uh, there we did not consider the uh, how the, what is the contribution to the pressure of each and every particle okay, here. But the description if you uh, in terms of microscopic part requires the specification of the state of each and individual molecule. Now, the number of molecules we consider here is uh, in the order of Avogadro's number and for each uh, particle or molecule we need to know th at least uh, 3 position coordinates and uh, 3 momentum coordinates. Okay. So, total 6 variables we need to know for each particle and we have used Avogadro number of particles here. So, uh, typically we uh, need 6 times 10 to the uh, 23 variables. Thus, to specify the micro microscopic state of the system, it is convenient to work on in 6 n dimensional space of coordinates and momentum of n particles. This 6 n dimensional space is called phase space of the system and microstate is simply a point in the phase space and the macroscopic state on the other hand corresponds to a large number of microstates and it represents a volume in the phase space. Okay. So, we, we have uh, we can see it in this uh, in this uh, um, plot here. Now, if we specify the total energy suppose total energy say E of the n particle system, it allows for a large number of microstates corresponding to this macrostate. Okay. So, as we see that uh, we have a 6 n dimensional uh, uh, space here. Okay. So, here we plotted a 3 n uh, number of momentum coordinate versus 3 n number of position coordinates and micro microscopic state is, is only a point in that phase space. On the other hand, the macroscopic state, it is a it is a volume in the volume in the phase space. Okay. <coughs> so, if we consider a particular uh, consider a particular micro, micro microscopic state of the system and watch how it evolves in time, we will be obtaining phase trajectories. So, what what is phase, phase trajectory? Okay. So, if we consider a particular microscopic state of the system and watch how it evolves in time, we will be obtaining phase trajectories. Now, we will here consider two examples to for better understand uh, uh, for better understanding of macro state and micro states. Okay. Suppose we are flipping two coins. Okay. So, one possibility is first coin comes with head and second coin comes with tails. So, this is the first occurrence here. Then next occurrence is first for first coins, first coin we get tails and for the next so second coin we get heads. So, for this macro state means one head and one tail, we have two micro states. Okay. First we have head, then tails or tails heads like this. Similarly, for macro state H H means for both coins if we get heads. So, for this macro state we have only one micro state. Okay. So, for this one for H T or T H we get two micro states. For this one we get one micro state H H case 
and we can also get tails tails both the coins for both the coins so for this one we get for this macro states we macro state is defined by tt here we get one micro state so we have total three macro states what are those macro state one head one tail is one macro state both the heads is one macro state and both the tails is the third micro st macro state and how many micro states we have we have four micro states because macro state ht head tail contain two micro states okay like ht or and th okay so next we take another example okay so we have suppose four walls and then we have uh, two uh, rooms or two baskets whatever you say okay and these balls they are identified by different colors okay now if i ask you you put four balls in different manner okay what what are the possibilities one first, first possibility is all four balls are in the in, in in first room and there is no ball in the second room so this is one macro state possible okay so this is my micro state one micro state okay like this then we can have blue red and green ball in one room and a red ball in second room and now we can uh, change the ball means three balls in one room and three ball in first room rather and one ball in second room okay so for this kind of arrangement we get four micro states now we can have in both rooms we can have equal number of balls means two two okay now if we uh, uh, if we rearrange the balls okay so we get six different possibilities here okay and then in the first uh, the fourth case suppose we put one ball in first room and three balls in the second room okay and for this case we get four different possibilities and the last case the first room is empty and the second room contains all the four balls okay so how many macro states we have now we can, we have five macro states okay and how many micro states are there we have 16 micro states like for the first uh, macro state we have only one micro state for the second macro state we have four micro states for third micro states we have six micro states for fourth macro states we have four micro states and for fifth macro state we have only one micro state so now we understand what is macro state what is micro state next we start with boltzmann factor so now we discuss boltzmann factors okay okay all of you know so no schrodinger equation okay so the schrodinger equation for n body system this hamiltonian operator h operating on psi j gives energy value E j like this okay so basically what we consider here we consider a cubic box so we considered a cubic box containing a number of
ideal gas molecules okay and so we have one container here and the volume of the container is v and age length of uh, each edge of this box is a suppose huh? so for uh, this kind of system so this is our system here we are considering okay so we are considering a system okay the system is like a cubic box containing n number of ideal gas molecules and volume of the container is v and age length of the box is a so v is nothing but a to the 3 right and for this kind of system the Schrodinger equation we can write h psi equals to e psi okay and here j is 1 2 3 etc it varies like this and these are microstates Okay. Now, now for this special case of ideal gas, since ideal gas they do not interact with each other, we can write E j the function of n and v we will discuss why E j depends on or how E j how does E j depend on n and v number of particles and volume v. Okay, and if you go back and check okay so h psi j equals to e j psi j and this psi j this 1 to psi j in the bracket 1 to 3 they represent the coordinate of particle 1 coordinate of, coordinate of particle 2 coordinate of particle 3 etc okay now so e j is is like this so if we say the e psi j h psi j equals to e j psi j this is our equation 1 and we can say this is our equation 2 okay what what are those epsilon 1 epsilon 2 etc okay so epsilon 1 epsilon 2 etc are the individual molecular energy okay so in in the expression of ej means e j equals to e epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 this expression 2 it contains n number of terms right number of particles it depends on number of particles. So, e j depends on number of particle okay. So, that is how the n dependency of e j comes here okay and we can add them the molecular energy levels because epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 etcetera because we are considering here ideal gas. Now, for example, for a monoatomic ideal gas, okay, if we consider a monoatomic ideal gas in that container, okay. in the container this presented above presented here or considered here considered here if we ignore 
the electronic states and focus and focus only on the translational states then EJs epsilon j's are just the translational energy given by so we consider three dimensional box so epsilon nx comma ny comma nz is h to the 2 by 8 m a to the 2 like this since we consider a, a three dimensional box hmm, we get this expression so this is uh, this is related to you know the uh, particle in one dimensional box so this is for energy value for energy expression for particle particle in three dimensional box okay now how does the v dependency comes we discussed how does n dependency of e n j e j n v it comes now the v dependency comes so if we see this expression here we see that there is one term called a to the 2 so in the above expression we have a term a to the 2 in the denominator right okay and we know and a is nothing but v to the 1 third right we consider cubic box okay so it says so or it, uh, it depicts the volume dependency v dependency v dependency of ej so now we know how does ej depends on n and depends on v okay so what what is our goal okay so our goal is to our goal is to okay our goal is to know our goal so what is our goal okay, so we want to know the probability the probability that a given or that a system will be in the jet state having energy or with energy ej okay so we want to know the probability because if we know the probability then we can calculate the average quantity right with the help of the discussion that we discussed in the last class so to do this or for this for this we consider a 
a huge collection of systems in contact with with the heat reservoir at a temperature T at a temperature T. Each system has the same values of a number of particles, volume and temperature. Okay. But but is likely to be to be in different quantum state quantum state consistent with the values of a n and v okay such a collection of systems is called an ensemble. Okay, so, for this actually what, do you, what is our goal? Our goal is to know the probability that a system will be in the jth state having energy E j. For this what we consider? We consider a huge collection of systems in contact with a heat reservoir at a temperature T. Each system in that collection has the same values of n, v and t, but is likely, likely to be in different quantum state consistent with the values of n and v. Such a collection of systems is called an ensemble. Okay. So, what is the definition of ensemble? So, next we will just define ensemble. Okay. So, definition of, what is the definition of, actual definition of ensemble? So, it is an idealization consisting of consisting of a large number of of mental copies sometimes infinitely infinitely many okay so we consider many many or a huge or large number of mental copies okay of a system considered all at once each of which represents a possible state that the real system might be in. So, what is the definition of ensemble? Ensemble 
is an idealization consisting of a large number of mental copies, sometimes, sometimes uh, infinitely many of a system considered all at once, each of which represents a possible state that the real system might be in. Okay. So, since we consider constant in Vt. So, we are basically describing canonical ensemble, canonical ensemble. So, in canonical ensemble, number of particles, volume of the system and temperature are fixed. Okay. So, now basically what what is ensemble? If we represent pictorially, we get like this. So, oh, these are the mental copies of our system, and they all are having constant NVT, and the whole thing. Okay, so let me draw it again, a little bit better manner. So we have like like this. Okay, so all are having in same number of particles, volume and temperature fixed, etc. Okay, so we have heat reservoir here. And whole thing, if we just putting one insulator here, so isolated from whole thing, whole thing is isolated from the surroundings. Okay. okay. So we have insulator, thermal insulator. So these, these, these are these these are all mental copies. Okay. So, our goal is to find a state J having energy E j and for that what is the probability, okay. that is our goal. Okay. So, we define say A j, we are defining one point one one point quantity aj which is number of systems in the state j with energy e okay so we are our goal is to calculate okay so how many systems are there in the J state having energy E j that we called A j. And capital A represents total number of the systems in the ensemble. And this A is very large usually, very, very large, very large number we consider. Okay. So, we defined uh, two quantities A j, A j and A, A j, where A j is the number of systems in the state J with energy E j and capital A is the total number of the systems in the uh, total number of the systems in the ensemble. Okay. Okay. So, now we, the relative number of systems in the states with energy E1 
and e2 must depend on e1 and e2 right ok. So, you can write a 2 by a 1 is it depends on e 1 and e 2 ok. ok. So, what, are, what is a 2 and a 1 ok. So, a 2 is the number of states having energy E2 and A1 is the number of states having energy E1. Fine, ok. Now, since, since energy is a quantity, that depends or that must, that must always be referred to a zero energy a zero energy a zero of energy the dependence on e1 and e2 in equation in equation suppose this is our equation 3 not 1 in equation 3 in equation 3 in equation on 3 must be of the form a2 by a1 function of the difference in their energies ok. Because, because energy is a quantity that must always be referred to a 0 of energy ok. We need to consider one 0 of energy. Okay. So, so, the dependence on E 1 and E 2 in equation 3 must be of the form this ok. So, suppose we are calling this one as equation 4 ok. okay. So, now this equation 4 this equation uh, 4 is true for any two energy states any two energy states. Thus, we can write that A 3 by A 2 equals to function of E 2 minus E 3 and E 3 by A 1 is function of A E 1 the difference in E 1 and E 3 or again E 3 by A 1 is nothing but 
a 2 by a 1 times a 3 by a 2. So, it says f e 1 minus e 3 is right. So, suppose this is our equation number 5. Okay. This equation 5, the above equation 5 is very similar to e to the x plus y is e to the x times e to the y. So, we can write so, a 2 by a 1 is nothing but e to the beta e 1 minus e 2. Okay. So, so, this is our equation number 6. This is our equation number 6. So, in general, what beta is a constant. And we will let us see that beta is, is inversely proportional to absolute temperature later we will see huh? or we can write beta uh, is 1 on k b t where k b is the Boltzmann's constant okay? that, are, that data we will prove it. Okay? So, here beta is a constant for time being you assume. Okay? So, in general equation 6 can be written as A m by A n is e to the beta E m minus A n, right. Okay. Or we can write A m is, so sorry, this is A n minus A n uh, minus A m. So, in general, we can write A m is in proportional to e to the minus beta times e m. Okay, or we can write a m is nothing but c times e to the minus beta a m. Okay. Since a m is a dummy variable, so we can write a j is nothing but c times e to the minus beta e j. So, for jth state this is also valid, where c is c is a proportionality constant. So, what is the value of c? We will see it. Okay. So, what we, we get? We get we get a j is c times e to the minus beta e j. Okay. Now, what is the value of c? Of c is a proportionality constant. Okay. So, sum over j a j is nothing but a total number of states right? and is c times j e to the minus beta j and b or we get c is a by sum over j 
e to the minus beta j. So, if you substitute the value of c in above equation of a j, we get, so we get a j is a e to the minus beta e j by sum over j e to the minus beta e j. or we can write a j by a. So, what is a j by a? You have, we have a j number of states having energy e j and capital A is the total number of states, so total, total number of states. So, what is a j by a? a j by a is nothing but the probability of jth state having energy, having energy e j. So, p j if we say probability, this is probability, probability of state j having energy e j. So, probability depends on n v beta, we can write e to the minus beta e j n v by sum over j e to the minus beta e j n v. And this j is sum over states, right. So, what we obtain so far? We obtain p j n v function, so p j is function of n v and beta is e to the minus beta e j by sum over j e to the minus beta e j n v. So, what was our goal? Our goal is to is to get the probability of state j having energy e j that we arrived at. So, this is the expression for that. Okay. And the denominator we have sum over j e to the minus beta e j and v sum over j sum over states we define it as q And this Q is known as canonical partition function. Okay. So, our the expression of Pj now reduces to So, now we have obtained the value of p j, okay, probability of state j having energy e j. Since we have obtained the expression for p j, we can calculate various thermodynamic quantities. Thank you.